Hello. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I am Ruthie Hewitt, Adult Services Librarian at Prescott Public Library. And tonight we have author Jerry K. Lincoln, and she'll be speaking on self-publishing. Jerry has written more than 25 books in many genres, including women's fiction, suspense, memoirs, romance, and mystery. And this presentation is hosted by the Central Arizona Writers and presented with funding from the Friends of the Prescott Public Library. And we will be taking your questions at the end of the presentation. You can submit those at any time um, by going to the bottom of your screen. If you're on a computer, click on Q&A. And if you have a phone or tablet, click on the three dots on the bottom and then Q&A. So Jerry, thank you for being here. Thank you. My name is J.K. Lincoln, otherwise known as J.K. Lincoln. And tonight I will be speaking about successful self-publishing. But before I begin, I'd like to thank the Prescott Library, Friends of the Library, the Central Arizona Writers, and Pat Fogarty, the president of Central Arizona Writers, for making this presentation possible. Um, my presentation is very visual, and so via Zoom, I'm going to use a PowerPoint. You can ask questions anytime you want via, via the Q&A or the chat. Um, but I won't be answering them till the end. Let me just get it started. Okay, here we go. So this is my information and um, Jerry Lincoln at gmail.com. You can email me about any questions that you have if we don't get them answered on here. If you want a more thorough explanation, we don't have time or also email me because I'm going to go over a lot of uh, different things that need a, um, a link and I have a uh, handout that I can email you. Just email me at that address. So in case you think that self-publishing is a new thing, look at these older books that have been self-published. The Tale of Peter Rabbit, A Christmas Carol, and the two in the middle are harder to see. E, a book by E.E. E. Cummings, the famous poet, and a book by Upton Sinclair. So it's not, self-publishing is not a new thing. It's been around for a long time. So this is a, a lot of people, um, they want to self-publish, but they're not sure if they can or not. And they look for a, a publisher and they find one. And, but there's a lot of scamming publishers out there. There are a lot of them. So these are ways to spot a scamming publisher. There's a website called Writer Beware. This is on my handout. If you email me, I'll give you the link for it. Writer Beware has alerts for writers. It has a thumbs down agency list. It has a thumbs down publisher list. It has publishing and marketing scams. And then there's Victoria Strauss Writer Beware. And I'm not sure if she's involved in the other one or not, but anyway, I'll give you that. And then right under that, you can see Kboards.com Writer Sanctum. Those are both um, writer forums, writers forums. So you go on there and you ask questions or you just read what's there. And so if I had a, if I found a publisher that accepted me and ABC publishers, and I want to know if they're any good or not, I would go to Kboards or Writer Sanctum and say, hey, has anybody been published or heard anything about ABC publishers? And they'll say, yeah, they're great. Or no, they ripped me off. But writer beware, this is just another place that the writers forum. Okay, on the bottom of the screen, you see where it says buy. If a publisher that has accepted you and that you have to pay for lets you, lets, lets you uh, publish your book that says my book by, by is not no longer on covers. Has it not been on covers for more than 10 years? I don't know how much longer after that, but it's been a long time since you should put by on your book cover. So if they allow you to do that, run the other direction. It's a huge red flag. This is my mother. I apologize for the, the bad photo. It's 50 years old and the camera was even older. Uh, my mother loved to sew. She loved to sew her own clothes. And it wasn't just, it wasn't that she had to, she had to make her own clothes. She did not have to make her own clothes. She loved making her own clothes. And the thing that she loved the most is when she wore her dress out in public and somebody said to her, oh, Rose, did you make that? It looks store-bought. 
So this is an analogy, my mother sewing her own clothes and liking when people said that it was store-bought. When you self-publish a book, what you want to hear is, it looks traditionally published. The secret to successful self-publishing is not to let the book look self-published. And there's a lot of ways, and I'm going to show you a lot of them in this, pub, in this uh, presentation. If you are self-published, you are held to a higher standard than traditionally published books. We've all seen traditionally published books and they have mistakes all over the place. They're allowed to do that. You're not. If you're doing a, a self-published book, you have to make the, the mistakes absolutely minimal. Absolutely minimal, none if you can. Okay, doing it yourself. I'd like you, I know I can't hear you, but I would like you to yourself, read me the first line there. Now, no lying. How many of you said the, the dog chased the cat down the road? No, I don't think you did that. I think you said the dog chased the cat down the road because your brain fixes it, especially when you've written it, even more so when you've written it. And I actually had this exact thing happen with my editor. She had me read this sentence like five times and I never saw it. She said, read one word at a time. You have to have another, somebody else's eyes on it. A, a editor is the optimal, but if you can't, you at least need somebody, somebody else's eyes on it. Okay, editing, this is doing it yourself now. Um, Pro Writer and Grammarly, they are uh, online or computer generated um, editing programs. I have them both. I have Pro Writer, the pro version, and I have Grammarly, the free version. So um, now I do that before I give it to my editor. I do have an editor. So a lot of people say that those writing programs give you a lot of false positives. That is true. That's true. I admit that's true. However, a lot of the false positives or see the sentence, go back to the one, the, the dog chased the cat down the road. I might get a false positive on that that says wrong verb tense. Well, the dog chased the cat down the road is not the wrong verb tense. Um, but it is, there's something else wrong with the sentence. And that's what I've noticed a lot with the false positives. Yes, it's a false positive, but there's something else wrong with the sentence. That's not 100% of the time. Sometimes there's just a false positive that's totally wrong. But often there's something else wrong with the sentence and the program is not um, sophisticated enough to identify it but it knows something is wrong. So that's my defense of, of computer generated uh, editing programs. Cover, obviously the obvious, the optimal is Photoshop. But if you can't have Photoshop, and I have a friend who's an artist, and she says that Photoshop Elements is as good as the expensive version. So that's what I have Elements. But if you don't have Photoshop Elements or Photoshop, Canva is an online one that you can use. I'm not sure if it's free or not. GIMP is free. GIMP is kind of a clone of Photoshop. So um, that one, uh, it can pretty much do whatever Photoshop can do. I've never used it. Okay, formatting your ebook and paperback. Uh, my number one suggestion, suggestion is Scrivener. Scrivener is a very, very nice word processing program. When I went from Word to Scrivener, it was like the sky opened up. It was just incredible. It does have a, a high learning curve. It's difficult to learn, but I have a suggestion for that in a minute. And it formats your paperbacks perfectly. It does incredibly cool things to your paperback. Talk about looking pretty, uh, traditionally published. It makes your books look traditionally published. It also does ebook formatting. Um, Sigil and Caliber, they're both cross-platform. That means that you can use them in Mac and Windows, and they're both free. The uh, links for those two programs and Scrivener are on my handout sheet if you email me. And I'll give you the email again at the end. Pages is a word processing program. I have it. I've used it in the past. I don't use it anymore. It, there is a Windows and a Mac version, although it's uh, native to Mac. And I've heard that it does really excellent ebook formatting. Ebook, EPUB Validator. After you get your ebook formatted, 
you will want to run it through an EPUB validator. It's free, it's on the internet. I'm pretty sure that I put it on the handout and it just tells you if anything's wrong. And uh, because a lot of times it will look good and a lot of times even Amazon will accept it but there's actually something a little bit wrong with it. I need a drink here. Okay, next. Scrivener. Learn Scrivener in 30 minutes. I have one for Mac and I have one for Windows. You can literally learn it in 30 minutes. You're not gonna be great at it, but you can get it to do everything you need, uh, include it, well, the Mac version includes compile, which is the hardest thing in Scrivener. So a lot of people have bought Scrivener and tried it and failed with it and let it sit. Um, if you've done that, get one of my books, they're cheap and uh, we'll walk you right through it. Okay, we're, now we're on general contractor. And the way I explain general contractor is, you're not gonna do it all, but you're gonna go places to get every piece done. So uh, on the cover piece, there's something called pre-made book covers. And a pre-made book, when you buy a book cover, um, not a pre-made, a regular book cover, they are anywhere from $5 to thousands of dollars. I thought it stopped again, but it doesn't look like it did. Um, $5 to thousands of dollars. Well, a pre-made book cover, you can get them usually um, under $100. I think I paid $50 for this one. So this one, what, how they do a pre-made is an artist does a bunch of book covers and puts them up on a site. It's in my handout. And you can go look through their book covers and say, oh, this one fits. So on this particular one, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but in his hand, he was holding a knife. Well, there's no knife in this book that I wrote. So I had the guy take out the knife. So, but $50, I think it's a pretty nice cover for 50 bucks. So pre-made book covers, that's one way to go. Now these two covers, the one on the right, I got done, I paid $5 for it, and I paid an extra $10 to get the PSD, the Photoshop file, in case I wanted to change it. But for five bucks, I think it's a pretty good book cover. This was actually a short story that I wrote. And you'll notice that I have a lot of uh, pen names. So the one on the left, uh, previously I mentioned Kboards.com, if you remember that, it's a writer's forum. I was hanging out on, uh, that forum one day and it's a good thing to do and uh, I saw there's an artist on there and she wanted to begin creating book covers so she said whoever emails me first I'll give them a free book cover well yay I got it this is my favorite book cover probably my least favorite book but my favorite book cover and I got it for free and I think she did a tremendous job I love that book cover okay um General contractor, we are on editing, proofreading, formatting covers on kboards.com. Y slash YP, what, what YP is, stands for is Yellow Pages. And Fiverr.com, Fiverr.com is a website. They used to be everything you could get $5. That's how you got that $5 book cover. But now there's all different um, prices, including thousands of dollars for book covers. And uh, so those are two places to get it. And under that, I wrote down what you search for on both Kboards and Fiverr.com, editing proof, whatever you're looking for, basically. Editing proofreading, KDP, which is Kindle uh, Direct Publishing, book, book formatting, that's Amazon. Ebook formatting, book, book covers, whatever you're looking for, just do a search for it. And my next slide shows you how to do the search. Um, and the top one, there's a blue bar in between to separate the two things. The top thing is, is kboards.com and on the right hand side, you see where it says search, just type it in there. Below the bar is Fiverr, you just type it in there and click the search. So that's how you do that. General contract, this is what you search for. I don't know why I put that in there, but you have it again. General contractor, okay. So if you wanna do a paperback, POD, in case you don't know what that is, is print on demand. So what that means is all my books are on Amazon. If you, want, if you go look at one of my books and you say, oh, cool, I want to buy that book. Amazon does not have my books um, in a warehouse somewhere. All my books are print on demand. So when you order it, they print it that day. 
they package it up and they send it out and you usually get it three days to a week, even though it didn't even exist before you ordered it. I think that's quantum physics there, something like that. Anyway, um, so all my books are done on Amazon. All my paperbacks are done on Amazon. Some people think Ingram Spark uh, is better quality. I don't. Um, I've seen it. I compared them. I don't think so. And some people think that Ingram Spark has better um, distributing abilities. So I'm going to show you something that a lot of people do not know. It, now, the difference between Amazon and Ingram Spark at this point is Ingram Spark costs $50 to do it and $50 to um, make any change, which Amazon is free. Okay, here we go. I sent Amazon an email um, and I asked them about how they do their distributing for expanded delivery. I always get expanded delivery. This was their response. With expanded distribution, how do the books get distributed? This was their response. If you enroll your paperback in expanded distribution, then your book goes into a rather large database. This database is run and managed by Lightning, Spark, Lightning Source and Ingram Spark Company. Did you get that? An Ingram Spark Company. Book chain schools, universities, etc., have access to this database where they can picture, purchase your books from. So there you have it. Now, if you go via Ingram Spark, are you going to get any other niceties just because you went with them? Maybe, but the distribution is the same. A lot of people don't know that. You do. Okay, Ingr hardcover. As far as hardcover, Ingram Spark. I've got a lot of hardcovers that I've done through Ingram Spark because Amazon does not support that. So um, it's fifty dollars, but I've never paid the fifty dollars because you can always find a coupon. Uh, do a Google search for Ingram Spark coupon, or you can sign up for Ingram Spark mailing list, and they usually tell you when they have a promotion. These are my hardcovers from um, Ingram Spark, all my children's books. They all turned out very well. The colors are bright. The covers are nice. Um, the quality is fine. Some of my uh, regular books are also in hardcover. Okay, now we're down to e-publishing. So there are several different places to publish your ebook. Amazon, Apple, um, Apple uh, iTunes Connect is where you get that from. Kobo. Kobo has their own uh, little device that you can read from. Google Play, Barnes & Noble, it's called Nook Press. Smashwords. Okay, those are the ones where you can do your e-publishing. Now, hardly any of mine are on all of those. Most of mine are in that other bulleted thing down there. It's called Kindle Select. And for the general public, it is called Kindle Unlimited. So what Kindle Unlimited is, is as a person, as a regular person who buys things from Amazon, if you're an avid reader, if you're a really fast reader, you go through two or three books a week or something like that. I don't, I'm not that fast. Um, you sign up for Kindle Unlimited. And there are a lot of authors out there. And I think there's probably some traditionally published, although I wouldn't swear to that. But there's a lot of authors who sign up for this. And you can get the books for free. You can actually read them for free. Now, for, on the author piece of it, the piece that I'm giving you, is Kindle Select. Um, what Kindle Select is, I put my book into Kindle Unlimited. And then anybody who reads it, I get paid for it. And the way I get paid for it, it varies every month, but it's generally about a half a cent a page. So um, if I like what the, the best thing about it is I have my, uh, actually I'll cover that in a minute. Well, any, any, so if my books are 300 pages. I get about a buck 50 and I sell my eBooks for, we're, no, we're talking about eBooks now. I sell my eBooks for three bucks and I get $2 a sale. So to get 150 for just somebody reading it, I think it's a good deal. And I think there's a lot of people that go that way instead of buying and I'm getting those. So I think it's a tremendous deal. 
um, e-publishing distributors. I have not done this, so I'm giving you very little information. Smashwords, Book Baby, and draft to digital The way they work is you upload your book and they distribute it to all the people on the previous slide. I've never done it. I don't know much about it. Okay, book covers. Uh, the most, most important thing, buy, do not have buy on your book cover. Uh, genre is really important. And if you don't think genre is important on your book cover, you will see in a second why it is. The font is important on your book cover. The thumbnail, you know, the thumbnail is like this big. It's like an inch and a half. Your book has to be identifiable, not even necessarily reading your title. You might not be able to do that. It'd be nice if you could, but you, might, but you at least need to identify the genre. Extremely important. And research, research is your job. You need to do it. Okay, now I'm gonna show, now I'm gonna explain all these. This is my book, see where it says, by Jerry Lincoln? Don't do that. This is one of the first books that I ever wrote. I didn't know that you weren't supposed to do that. No, I have never fixed it. But I will say one thing about this book, Bathroom Yoga. This book was featured on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. He made fun of it for a full minute and sales skyrocketed. It's a real yoga book. It tells, with words and pictures, it tells you how to do all the seated yoga. Okay. Now, I know I can't hear you, but I want you all to tell me what kind of books these are. They're romance, right? It's obvious they're romance. There's naked men, half naked men on the cover. They're romance. Now, I'm gonna tell you something else about these covers that you might not know. When you see a half naked man on the cover or two people in a passionate embrace, that signifies steamy romance, which is romance with sex in it. However, I wrote a romance series. There's no sex in it. It's called Sweet Romance. So there's no um, naked people on my cover. Now, if you put naked people on your cover and there's no sex in it, you're gonna get a lot of uh, bad reviews because people, if they buy a cover with a naked man, they wanna hear about it. All the details. Okay, so this is, let's see, most of them are dark, but not all of them are dark. But there's, now these are all thrillers, okay? They're thrillers. Now look at the font on these of the title. They're all very similar. Now this one thin air, they're thinner, but most of the others are very fat, plain, like boxy font. That's for thrillers. That is what's popular right now. And what's popular does change, but this is what is popular right now. So this is mine, it's a suspense novel. It's the same kind, it's not, very, it's not as the, the big thick kind, but it is the same font. Okay, now I'd like you to guess, I know I can't hear you, what kind of uh, cover this is, what kind of book, what kind of genre by the picture. Now this picture, this cover, I think it's a gorgeous cover. I love that picture. I can't tell you how much I love this picture. However, it's not, it's not what it what seems to be. My guess would be like paranormal, something paranormal, something, um, uh, I don't know, shifter, romance. I don't even know what that is. I've never read it, but I've heard about it. But anyway, well, that's not what it is. This book is actually a nonfiction book. And see the font there? The font is way too fancy. This is a nonfiction book by Dr. Jody. Dr. Jody, if you're out there, I apologize. It's a wonder, it's a great book. I bought this book, it's a great book, but she'd sell a lot more copies if she had a, an applicable cover. So these are nonfiction covers. They're very plain, um, even the ones with pictures, it's a very simple picture, a pencil, a very thin little thing on that one. Um, a lot of white, red, these are very simple nonfiction books. This is the kind of cover you're going for if you're doing a um, nonfiction book. These are my nonfiction books. A Guide to Publishing Books on Amazon KDP. A Guide to Amazon Ads Marketing. The Scrivener books that I mentioned before. They're all white, red, a little bit of a picture. Okay, now these are the thumbnails. It's the best I could do with a thumbnail. You can see even small versions. They're romance, they're, they're uh, thrillers, they're nonfiction. 
and the little one with the uh, the wrong thing. It looked you can't read the the title, and it, it's the wrong genre. So she's not going to get the draw that she should. Okay, this is how this is your research part. Uh, the blue bar in the middle is a separation. So you go to Google and you you Google Amazon.com bestsellers nonfiction. Amazon.com bestsellers thrillers. Amazon.com bestsellers mysteries, whatever you're writing, do that. And this is what you're going to get. This is the this is bestsellers in nonfiction. Uh, the second book under the banner of heaven. I've read that book. Great, great book. But this these were the number, these were the number six, number one through six bestsellers on the day that I did this. And you can see that they're all basically simple. Um, even the ones with pictures, simple pictures. So that's nonfiction. This is what you need to do before you get your picture done, your cover done. Uh, these are the thrillers, thrillers and suspense. You can see I took a lot from my thing there. And uh, so that's the research part that you need to do. You need to look at the bestsellers. And you can also notice not one of them has buy on the cover. Okay. Um, I did this at another library and the librarian, the head librarian was in the room with me. And so you can see where the table of contents on this is on the left hand side, that's called Verso. On the right hand side is Recto. So on the left hand side is Verso and it's uh, the table of contents starts on the left hand side. No, 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 no. The librarian is going, no, no, no. You never start the table of contents on the left hand side. You start the table of contents on the left-hand side, it's screaming self-published. And remember the picture of my mother, you want it to look traditionally published. Am I taking too long? No, we're good. Okay. Seven okay. Uh, forward should also be on the right-hand side. The preface should also be on the right-hand side. Those are probably not as uh, terrible errors as the table of contents, but still not a good thing. So these are all things that make your book look self-published. My internet connection is unstable. I hope you can hear me. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna move on to marketing. Um, somebody told me, actually it was one of the writer's websites that I go on, the uh, forums. The best way to market your book is write another one. So that goes to series. Branding is another piece of that. Kindle Select, I'll describe that. Amazon marketing, pay-per-click, I'll describe that. Promotions, book blog, self-promotion, which is what I've been doing this whole presentation. Okay, series. This is my sweet romance series, no sex in it. Um, if you want to make money on a romance series, you got to put sex in it. That was my mistake. So anyway, this is the first four books in the series. Now you can see that they all even though there's different colors involved, I have the title at the top, I have Wind Always in Script, I have Cowgirls in Time Romance, which is the name of the series, in script, my name is at the bottom, there's a picture in the center, they're all basically the same. So this goes to two things, series and branding, goes to branding. Let me give you a better instance of branding. This is my Cozy Mystery series, the first four books in the Cozy Mystery series. Um, see the clouds in the background, even though there's different pictures, I have clouds in the background. And to show how this works, a friend of mine who loves my books has all these books. And she went, I don't know where she was that she was looking for books again. And she saw a cover that had clouds on it. She thought it was mine using a pen name and she bought it. That goes to the branding because my branding is clouds on this series. She thought that was it. So that's a good um, example of branding. Okay, this is my, um, this is branding and a series. You can see they're all pretty much the same, even with different titles. Okay, box sets. When I, I first did the box set on the romance, the one on the left, and then I did the first four books. That's a seven book series. The one on the right is my cozy. It's a, right now it's a five book series. I'm kind of working on book six right now. But I did these because I thought, well, nobody's going to buy a, uh, you know, four books box set. It, the box set is actually an ebook, but nobody's going to buy a box set from an unknown author. 
Well, surprisingly they are, but what I did it for was what we mentioned, what I mentioned before about the Kindle Select, because these books each have 1,200 pages in them about that. So I get six bucks every time somebody reads through these. So that's, a, that's what good a box set is if you're doing series. Um, Amazon marketing, this is what I did for Amazon marketing. Okay, there's not a lot I can say about Amazon marketing except for this. It's pay per click. So what that means is if I do an ad for this book and it, it it's called an impression, there are a thousand impressions. Every time somebody goes on Amazon, it shows them a picture of my book with a brief description, like a one sentence description. If it shows, shows it a thousand times, how much do you think that cost me? It cost me nothing. It cost me nothing until somebody clicks on it. And as far as how much a click costs, I decide that, I determine that. And this book actually describes exactly how to do it. It walks you through step by step. I have pictures of each of the steps. I have a description on each of the steps. And this is an example of it. And um, there's all, you can also get Amazon marketing in uh, Spain, Italy, UK, and I think they just opened it up to, oh, France, and I think they just opened it up to a couple more places. And the book covers that also. In closing, promotions. What promotions are, perhaps you've signed up or you know somebody who's signed up on a website to get, um, they send you an email every day or every couple days or whatever it is on books that are for sale that day. And what a promotion is, is you sign up on these places and you pay a certain amount and that varies. It varies between, I would say, free $5 and $1,000. And um, there are some, some of them are harder to get into. And you pay and then they send this out and people uh, get the, the email that shows your book and then they click on it, they buy your book. So that's what promotions are. I do use these all the time. Book blogs. You can do a search on um, book blogs, mysteries, book blogs, romance, whatever it is. Um, if they give you a good review on a book blog, it's excellent for you. It's not something I've done yet. I, I need to write sometimes. So, um, but I think it's good. I think it would be good. Self-promotion, which is what I've been doing this entire time. And we'll move on to self-promotion. Um, these are my three of my yoga books. I think I have five. They all have, it's like the, uh, the uh, uh, walkthrough on the Amazon stuff that I told you about. It has pictures and text telling you how to do each move. They're basically all seated yoga. On an airplane, in a wheelchair, and on a horse, all seated yoga. The one on the left, The Dog Who Rescued Me, is kind of a memoir. My dog attacked me, and it tells why that happened, how I got over it. And I still have him. He just turned 11 years old and we're still together. And it's a great story, a very happy ending story. And the dog is still alive, <laughs> which is always a good thing in dog books. Um, the one on the right is a book about my mother, her two and a half years in a nursing home. And um, that's my uh, niece and her two children. They're both just graduated college. And um, anyway, that's another memoir. Uh, this is my email again for, my, for the uh, handout. If you want the handout, email me. And if you do not get a response in 48 hours, usually it will be 24, check your spam folder or um, the trash because sometimes my emails end up there. I will absolutely email you back within 48 hours, usually 24, sending you the, the uh, handout that I've talked about. Gives you links to all the places that I mentioned, all the, all the things that I mentioned, the programs, the places, everything in there. So there, I'm going to get out of this if I can see this. Okay. Okay. Can you put me back on the big screen, Ruthie? Are there any uh, questions? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are on the big screen. Um, there was a question. Um, is ebook a file format like PDF? Yes and no. The answer to that is there are several ebook formats. There is dot mobi, M O B I. There is dot, um, what's another one? There are several of them. And uh, God, I can't remember the other ones now. Um, EPUB. Um, 
E yes, EPUB, and there's another one. And uh, so there's actually several of them. And most programs will give you your choice of which one. Anything else I see? Thank Questions you. I see in the chat. I don't see any other um, questions. If anybody has a question, you can put it in the, the Q&A or the chat. Tiger, thank you for watching. Um, so they ask, are the ebook formats better than the PDF? They're completely different. I use a PDF for the paperback and I use the ebook format, Mobi or the EPUB or one of the other ones for the ebook. I never use PDF for an ebook format. Never, ever, ever. You have no idea what you're going to get. So they're completely different, is the answer. Okay. Um, so if there are no any que no other questions, I just want to thank you for your time. All right. Well, you thank you to everyone for joining us, and um, thank you, Jerry. Good night. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye bye.